I think it's time to pop the kettle on for a cup of tea, or coffee really in this case, because that's what this is kind of... The country this comes from, Turkey, that's what they'd uh, be making with it, coffee. And uh, the reason I bought this, which, uh, do you see the element? No, there's no heating element. Mmm, suspicious. The reason I bought this is because when I did the video on the Chinese electrode water heater, someone mentioned, oh yeah, I got a kettle in Turkey while I was there, and uh, it, it had a plastic spoon. And, uh, yeah, let's plug this in. You've kind of guessed what, uh, what this is already, haven't you? It's the latest in my collection of dodgy electrode heating type devices. So let's uh, sit that kettle over there while the power climbs steadily to about 400 and... Oh, and it's starting to buzz already. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, some mentioned they'd been to Turkey and they'd got this kettle and uh, I thought, well, I've got to get one of them. And, well, eBay... But very hard to find because it's not a typical Chinese... I, I couldn't find Chinese versions of this. Maybe they are available. But uh, this is more uh, a European version where Electro... You know, when you look at the internet and Russia and all that, everybody's just a crackpot, really, with the blooming wires and everything stuck in the tea to actually heat it. So, um, yeah, this thing came and uh, it does come with warnings saying... Uh, do not plug in the socket while the appliance is empty. When the plug is in the socket, do not put your hand in the appliance or in the water remained in the appliance. Do not use the appliances. Uh, do use the appliance's own spoon or a wooden spoon. Never use a metal spoon. First put... Yeah, here's the odd bit. It says, first put water, coffee and sugar and blend. Then put the plug in the socket. Your coffee is ready. Now, I have to say, yeah, pro it was that fast, literally, when I did that. I did put some coffee in, and I put some water in, and some milk, and sugar, just like it said, some instant coffee, and it was violent, and it didn't come out brown, it came out grey. There was a lot of chemical reactions going on in there. I poured it out, uh, and I look, looking at it and smelling it, it smelt metallic, and yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I think just water is what you want to put in this. Uh, I took a wee sip, it was disgusting. It really tasted grey and metallic. So this thing is buzzing away here and uh, the water is agitating. So yeah, quite hard to find as I say. It does say 220 to 240 volt AC, 960 watt, 50 hertz. To be honest, anything above, anything above like 1 or 2 hertz is probably good enough and yeah, anything from 110 up to 240 volts, it will just take a slightly longer time. But yeah, it says heating duration varies with different water tempers. Please unplug when the water is boiled. Tempers? I guess that must really, what they mean is conduction, the conductivity of the water. So now this thing is uh, pretty much up to temperature, and it's notable that when it comes up to temperature, the actual current, the power drops quite dramatically. It seems to have a shape of electrode in there that kind of facilitates, it, it displaces the... Uh, the steam displaces the water out, and it uh, has a you know it just lowers the current to a good degree. It's sort of hovering about the 200 watts mark now, and uh, it will just sit like that for quite a long period of time at that lower current. So, um, yeah, it's quite nice. It's uh, ideal for heating very small quantities of water because it literally, as long as you cover the grid at the bottom, that's uh, that's ideal. Oh, it continues to go down. It's down at 210. I mean, it's very variable. Yeah, so, um, yes, well, <coughs> so I think it's time to actually uh, explore this a bit further, so um, I'm just going to pause a moment while I start trying to pull bits of plastic out of this. Well, I have to say it was really quite hard getting this bit out. I tried hooking it out with a bit of metal wire with it, just hooked in the end, but it just wouldn't come out. Ended up, particularly with the restricted space, with the hand really in there, just trying to prise it out until it came out with a bit of a bang. The bottom also came off with a bit of a bang and losing one of its pins in the process. And what you can actually see is that there's no strain relief. The flex comes in and it's got the two uh, terminals and they're just like put onto basically what looks like aluminium rivets. Yeah. And in the, the other end, it's basically the classic stinger, which would normally be two stainless steel um, 
razor blades. I think razor blades are made of stainless steel. Now these, the magnet doesn't stick to them and they're shiny enough that I do think these are stainless steel. Um, and, uh, well I'll show you, I'll plug it in again. Noting that there are no connections, in fact, tell you what, before I do that I'll put it partially together again. The plastic is just not deflashed, it's, it's very cheap and nasty. Uh, shame on you, uh, Turkey, which is where this is made. Whoop. So this clips on here. That kind of goes in there, and then it's kind of held on by this. Then again, I suppose Turkey, it's Europe, you know, it's very hard to compete with China. So, um, oh no, was that going the inside? Yeah, it goes on the inside, I think. And that holds everything in place when it's squished in. Yeah, that suit still looks about right. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm surprised anything's still like a plastic good like a kettle is actually even made in Europe. So um, yes, let's uh, add some water to it and try it now it's fully exposed. I have tried this without the water and uh, without the plate in the bottom. And it seems to... Uh, it seems to be less regulated, it seems to be a bit more violent. Now, as I was saying, those things, it looks like a plastic sort of frame round. It is just literally like two metal plates, just slightly separated by plastic uh, spacers in there. Oh, I see black flotsam coming off it. That'll be from the earlier coffee experiment, I think. It's drawing about 500 watts. I'll bring the power meter in. I should put this out of the way of uh, there and uh, I'll just tilt it in like that. Is that still covering water? Yes it is, it's good enough. So it boils and then it doesn't seem to have the same luck in actually trying to squirt the, you know, it seems to, shall we say, ventilate a bit more. It just seems to just keep boiling quite ferociously. It doesn't, go, the current doesn't go down quite as much as when the plastic housing's in there. I think that's kind of helps it uh, regulate that. Yeah, and it'll just sit boiling like that for ages. Hmm. So, um, it's quite novel. Now your challenge uh, is to try and find this, because uh, I had to hunt on the, I mean, I knew I'd find it on eBay if I tried, but it was pretty hard. And I'll give you a clue, it, it's got, the listing actually shows a plastic spoon and you think, well, that's a bit of a clue. And the listing actually says, don't stick your fingers in the water or don't use a metal spoon and that's even, that's an even better clue. But yeah, this is quite a neat, it's, it's worth adding to my dodgy electrical apparatus collections. I do notice all the flots and the black metal coming off that now, which uh, is probably from the reaction earlier on with the, the coffee test. But um, yeah, it's, it's quite a neat device. Uh, I'm sure uh, you guys will be saying, yes, it's going to be putting chromium and everything out, it's going to kill you. But um, yes, I still like it just because of its uh, dodgy gadget value.